Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. one of the Scottish Daily Truth, written, edited, and published by McGlashan. The Truth, eh? Okay. Huh? Mm. Headline, enormous amount of poofs discovered <laughs> in England. <laughs> yes. Our reporter was astounded on a recent trip to England to discover that the country... Entire country is populated by a bunch of floppy-lipped ponces... I can read. <laughs> and posh pricks. <laughs> I must say, you've got an eye for a scoop. Right. <laughs> Where do you see the sports pages? Football results. England 2, Scotland 3. <laughs> Yesterday afternoon, 25 years ago, <laughs> Scotland thrashed, massacred and stomped on the world champions, England. You haven't finished it! Oh. Stomped on the world champions, England, Ha, ha. <laughs> you, Makelvaney, will be proud of you. Bah, not as proud as Alan Cash. Oh, there's not a crossword, is there? Of course there is. One across, Englishman. Three letters, beginning in G, ending in it. Ah. <laughs> Don't set of spreads. It's my best yet. Oh, competition. Win a weekend with McGlashan. Mm, can't wait. <laughs> If anyone can track down Jimmy Hill and hit him full in the face with an Arbroath Smokey. <laughs> what is it with you, McLashen? What do you want? Democracy! That's what I want! We've got a democracy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three million Scots vote SNP and one Morningside insurance broker called Malcolm votes Tory and we get another five years of John Major! <laughs> John Major's as much of a man of the people as you are. Oh, that's right, yeah, John Major, yeah. England's answer to would you like to be run by a pasty-faced tit who tucks his vest into his <laughs> underpants. <laughs> years and years of your life wasted on a dream. You just want the people to be given a chance. Everyone gets their own country these days. I mean, Latvia, Estonia. I mean, if a bunch of badly dressed potato farmers can get their own country, why can't I? <laughs> Look what my country's produced, you know? Artists, inventors, philosophers. You've left out alcoholics. Yes! <laughs> alcoholics! This country's ready. We've had enough. You throw a stone and it'll hit a twisted knot of discontent, just waiting to be organised and marched and led to freedom. Look, what's your name? Douglas McDermott. Good name. Great name. <laughs> Tell him, Douglas. What do you think of the English? The English? Well, I admire the fact that they have the mother of parliaments and that they've produced people like Shakespeare and Dickens. And I like the feeling you get in England that there is a world where the corn sways in the sunshine. And it... <laughs> Despite all the prejudice and hatred and inequity, deep down, we are all equal and that life Although endlessly troubled, it's, it's perhaps, after all, worth living. <laughs> Poof. <laughs> oh, I was chugging into town as fast as I could go. I stopped at some traffic lights behind a mini metro. My other cars are pops. Thanks for letting me keep that.
anarch on, by the way. It's just that this is my lucky anarch. <laughs> Everything lucky that's ever happened to me has happened while I've been wearing this anorak. <laughs> Although I never don't wear the anorak, so I suppose there's no way of telling if it's actually the anorak that's bringing me luck. <laughs> you know, like maybe I've got lucky hair. <laughs> or, or a lucky nose. Come to think of it, everything unlucky that's ever happened to me has happened while I've been wearing this anorak. <laughs> so maybe it's my unlucky anorak. <laughs> we'll never know, eh? Put it up there with Who Shot Kennedy is one of the great unsolved mysteries. <laughs> So it's my appendix, eh? Are you sure? I thought I had them out. Maybe that was my tonsils. <laughs> I kept them. <laughs> what do you think? Tonsils or appendix? Teeth. <laughs> really? If it's my appendix, should it not hurt more? Does it not worry you that I don't appear to be in any sort of pain? <laughs> <laughs> Is that more the sort of thing you're used to? <laughs> Morning. Morning. Well, hello, Doctor. It's definitely not my teeth, by the way. <laughs> Thanks for the drugs you gave me this morning. Mum's a word. <laughs> Good to have a little earner on the side, eh? Right, I'm going to put you under, Mr Gilhooly. You can't put me under, Mr Gilhooly. I am Mr Gilhooly. Right. Unzip his anorak, please, nurse. Can't set it. You'll need to give it a wee sugar at the bottom, then. <laughs> It's all right, I can get it. <laughs> I could do this all. What is he under now? He has to be. He's had enough to knock out an elephant. Scalpel nurse. Oh, so you do say that? <laughs> I thought all that scalpel chisel stuff was just like in the movies. <laughs> you never see Doctor House with that big guy with a beard who, who's got about three names. Mind you, it's about as big as three people, so I suppose it's fair enough. <laughs> James Robertson Justice? Well, that's him. I always get him confused with Jimmy Edwards for some reason. Maybe really because they're both dead. <laughs> Although Harold McMillan's dead, I don't get him confused with James Robertson. <laughs> I get him confused with Alec Douglas Holm. It's pronounced Hume, actually. Really? Yeah, well, let's hurry up and we can all get Hume. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it. His speech appears to operate independently of his central nervous system. <laughs> Is really good, by the way. It is highly irregular, but I suppose we could just proceed. I carry on. I'll keep busy up this end. <laughs> Hello, Mum. <laughs> Hi, it's Callum. They haven't said anything, but I think I'm a model patient. <laughs> I think they're quite impressed with me. Anyway, I was going to ask you. Oh my God, what's happened? Stop the recess. Injecting ten cc of adrenaline now. Okay. Clear, clear. Oh, still going. Blood pressure dropping. 10 cc's of adrenaline. Clear! God, I think we've lost him. It's all right. I'm up here. I'm just having an out of anorak experience. When I was a lad, there was only one Germany. There was Latvia and Lithuania and Estonia and Bosnia, Herzegovina, Serbia and Croatia, Kazakhstan, <laughs> Uzbekistan, and then it all changed. And then it all changed back again. <laughs> Those changes cost the lives of 66 million people. But it didn't cost me a penny, because <laughs> I kept me old Atlas. <laughs> Pillar. And you must never ask 
why your granny does have a prickly beard when she does kiss you. <laughs> and old people can get special bendy backs so they can pick up more rubbish in the street because that is their favourite. And they do have pretend teeth that are bigger than their whole face. <laughs> Sometimes they do live in a special place called the Old Pimples Hole. <laughs> and you must visit them once a week when you should be playing. <laughs> and they say to you, are you my mummy? And they wee into a see-through handbag. <laughs> but, but sometimes, if they're allowed to live in their very own house, then it must be very, very smelly. Because in the fridge, there's only one kipper and a maggot. And so the bottle one does taste like nail varnish. <laughs> and old people do only eat mints and a nice bit of leg of joint. <laughs> and they do love flowers and kittens better than they love humans. <laughs> and they do like to watch the television so they can be furious and say, Shocking on the news. <laughs> and then fall asleep. And old people must never have a baby in case it was really a hairy monkey. <laughs> so an old lady's tummy must shrivel up into apple crumble. <laughs> and they can only have grandchildren and they do kiss you all the blooming time. <laughs> and they do try to rub your freckles off with a stinky hanky what they did lick. <laughs> and they do say the same sentence all over again because they think you are deaf, but really they are. <laughs> in the world, otherwise there would not be any graveyards. <laughs> and that is what is an old person. It is, it's true! You all right locking up there, Jim? Hi, <laughs> right, Jim. Good night. Good night. I've come to have my publicity shots done. Oh, well, there's a stroke of luck. I'm a photographer. <laughs> well, yes, I know. I'm a great admirer of your work. Oh, stop your bloody tom tinkering, let me chance. Nay? Michael? Yes, you're a boy. I'm terribly sorry. I thought you were a doxy. Oh, it's so hard to tell these days what with the Beatles dressing up as girls. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, uh, where would you like me to sit? Oh, anywhere you like to. <gasps> Mind the kitten? What? <laughs> I think it's a hat. Is it? No wonder it's been leaving its milk. <laughs> you just have to get yourself made up. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't bring any with me. Oh, never fear, I'll do it. I've made up the best of them. And if I can make Margaret Rutherford look normal, I can certainly do something for you. <laughs> Margaret Rutherford, she was great in Blythe Spirit. Yes, lolly woman, but face like an arsehole. <laughs> Hang back and let's get those cheekbones buffed up, shall we? Uh, do, do all your subjects wear makeup? Yes, all except for Charles Lawton. He just used to bring in a big sausage shaped like a nose, popped it on, that was it. No grease paint, no thank you. Surely that was his real nose. Really? Oh, no wonder he's upset when I tried to cook it. <laughs> Very strange man. Lolly, of course, though many said he was the devil. Right, now, oh, just like to try this toga for size. Ah, uh, right. Oh, yeah. oh, yes, I think that's going to be lolly. Do you know, I once did Jack Hawkins in a toga, buttocks like alabaster. Look at that. Uh, that's Vivian Lee. Vivian? 
Vivian. Oh, thank you for asking, Ducky dear. Yes, I was introduced to Vivian by the Lunts. Said lolly couple, the Lunts. She was a woman, he was a man. Charming. <laughs> anyway, they brought Vivian to my studio. Sweet Pip, a bag of nerves, terrified of everything. Both. <laughs> now, would that scare you? Well, yes. Of course not. Scared the shit out of Vivian, though. <laughs> the face of an angel, mind like a cesspit, and tiny, tiny hands. <laughs> I was just wondering... Who my favourite subject was? Oh, sweet of you to ask, dear. It's so hard to tell because they were all so completely lully. <laughs> I think we're very there. Yes, now remember, the key to a lully photograph is to relax. So let your limbs swing free, let your personality scamper all over your fizzog, tip to chin, shoulders back, legs out, arms folded, and try to look intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> And one, two, three, and imagine you're having sexual intercourse. <laughs> By Jove, I think we've got it in one. What? Ooh, that'll be the door. Don't mind me, I'll let yourself out. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Welcome to the Lavatory Express. <laughs> with Frank Holvis. <laughs> Last night, I did something I haven't done for years. I wet the bed. <laughs> I woke up to find that I'd used my pyjamas as a gavatory, ladies and gentlemen. And I panicked a bit because for a moment, I wasn't quite sure where I was. I didn't know if I was in my own bed at home or in somebody else's bed in somebody else's home. But uh, I got my bearings, and thank God it was somebody else's bed. <laughs> but I must have passed a substantial amount of wee wee because it had brought down the ceiling of the room below. <laughs> I mean, it's so embarrassing. What do you do in that kind of situation? I, I just set fire to the bed and get. <laughs> A bad start to the day. I mean, my only excuse was that I'd been asleep when it happened, obviously. <laughs> if I'd been awake, I'd have been masturbating. Uh... <laughs> Which is strict, strictly against doctor's orders, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, a few weeks ago I sprained my penis quite badly. <laughs> Running for a bus. <laughs> You shouldn't masturbate when you're running for a bus, I know. <laughs> what was I supposed to do? The bus was coming. <laughs> and so was I. <laughs> Only him, I can tell you. But anyway, this meant a trip to the hospital, to the genital urinary medicine department. <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful, I must admit. <laughs> and I went in, and the doctor was very friendly. Intimate. Intimate, I would say. Asked some very personal questions. It got quite physical at one point. <laughs> Actually, I think we'd rather hit it off. <laughs> he asked to see me again anyway. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh, I mean, I know he's a broke, but for Pete's sake, it's the first interest anybody's shown in me for a bloody long time. <laughs> he was very concerned. Wanted to know if I took precautions before having sex, and I said, of course, I always take the precaution of having an erection. <laughs> down that hospital again tomorrow. It's probably why I wet the bed last night. Excitement, you see. <laughs> he asked me to give him a sample. And if that's not love, it's pretty bloody gross, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Good night. Sleep tight.
Celia. George. Where are you going? What? Sorry? What? Beg your pardon? My job. Your what? <laughs> My job. Come again? <laughs> employment. <laughs> See? <laughs> Gainful employment. I'm not with you. <laughs> I've got my work. Hmm? <laughs> my place of employment. I'm still not with you. I'm taking my place in the job market. Could you say that again, please? <laughs> I'm going to earn a living. I'm lost. Work. Sorry? <laughs> my business. What? <laughs> my, my calling. Eh? Hey? Career. Come again. <laughs> Profession. I'm going to have to ask you to say that again. <laughs> my post. Your what? My, my position. Pos... <laughs> Occupation. I beg your pardon. Assignment. Uh-huh. Venture. I'm lost. My calling. Your what? My, my matey. Matey who? <laughs> Sorry? My charge. Hmm? Craft. I'm baffled. What? It's like a big chore. What is? A job. A, a job. It's like, it's like a big errand. <laughs> no, you're going to have to go right back to the very beginning. <laughs> you're going to do my trade. Your duty. Pardon? Task, for want of a better word. Task. Stint. Not task, then. Well, like task. I'm going to fulfil my function. Fulfil your what? <laughs> Honour my contract. Sorry? Make a contribution. What? Complete my commission. Again? My assignment. Hey? My enterprise. Pardon? Situation. Hmm? Office. Huh? Pursuit. Hey? My undertaking. Your what? My vocation. Oh, you're going to work? Yes. <laughs> see you soon, man. Yeah, bye. Where's your mother? In the kitchen, father. Well, you're all sitting here enjoying yourselves. Perhaps instead of lolly lollying around here, one of you might be good enough to go to the kitchen to see your mother require some assistance. Okay, father. Oh, no. Don't bother now. It's too late now. After the event, the damage is done. <laughs> sitting here like a lot of people sitting here. Or your mother in the kitchen not sitting here like a lot of people sitting here. You know, one day your mother's going to drop dead of a heart attack. And then you'll be sorry. Then you'll wish she hadn't been lolly lollying around here where your mother breathed her last trying to make you happy. So think on. She's only making a cup of tea. She? Who's she? She has a name, you know. Mother, I mean. Mother has a name, you know. And it's mother, not she. Mother. It's not only a cup of tea. It's six cups of tea. And even if your mother wasn't making a cup of tea, you should still be in there helping her anyway. Even, even if she wasn't making a cup of tea at all. Even if she was in here, fast asleep, not doing anything, enjoying herself. You should still be in there helping her anyway. So think on. And don't come running to me. Here she comes. Help me, mother. Get a table. Don't just sit there. Don't just stand there! Don't just get up and down like that! I said, don't just stand there! Make way, here she comes, and it's not she! I got away! Come on, mother, go away! Come on, you two! Make way, go! Go out of the way, you comfy wretch! Don't just sit there like a seat! Come on! something done around here, you've got to do it yourself. <laughs> Let's go your mother's doing it. Thank you, dear. Mm -hmm. <laughs>